an infirmity that does not change my identity. Hallelujah. I'm who I am. I'm who God says that I am. You are who you are. You are who God says that you are. So let no thank you, thank you, pia, pia, dibby, dibby type of circumstances come before you. Hallelujah. And try to change who you are. You are who you are regardless of your circumstances because your infirmity does not change your identity. Help me, Holy Spirit. Come on, glorify the Lord, everyone. Come on, come on, come on. It's Sunday morning. Amen. Let's be the name of God. It's such a ple pleasure to be here one more Sunday. Praise God. For me, it's a very, very significant Sunday. But I won't tell you why yet. Amen. But it's a wonderful Sunday to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be alive. Praise God. All those who are visiting, praise God. My late wife's sister. Praise God. Sister Pat. Let's be the name of God. All the faces I've not seen for a while or maybe those I've not seen. Praise God. Ever. Praise God. It's good to see everyone. Praise God. What a pleasant surprise. Amen. So such as sons in the house of the Lord. Everyone, praise God, who's not here, who's not been here for a while, you're here. You're here for the first time. Let me join in the previous welcome. Praise God. Welcome and welcome back to the house of the Lord. Blessed be the name of God. Sister Ch Pastor Chitza's sister. Praise God. I think I saw you at some banquet some years ago. Amen. Amen. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. I'd like to share with you something I believe I've maybe shared before. Let's be the name of God, but somehow I'm redirected to this passage and this story. Praise God. But well, Franklin, you're back from your tour in Africa. Good to see you. Amen. How many languages did you did you how many, how many new languages did you learn? We're gonna have them. We, we, we're going to have him speak some African for us at some point or the other. So do some rehearsal. So next week you come, you can. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Second Samuel chapter 9. Let's turn your Bibles with me, please. And before I go any further, I'm going to ask Pastor Mike just to say a prayer. You said that, Mike? Oh. Praise the Lord. I want to uh, lift up my bishop and pray that as I stand on this pulpit, that the flesh will lose its strength. And that the Spirit of God will have total eminence. That has the word proceed out of his mouth, seeing as an oracle of God, speaking as an oracle of God. That when the word comes to you, it will find expression in your life. That whatever that you are going through, there's no power even from hell that can stand the word of God. That before you leave this place this morning, Jehovah Almighty will bless you and establish you. The Lord will strengthen you. The Lord will set to you. The Lord will deliver you from every negativity in the name of Jesus. And as you receive the word, may you begin to find expression even in the lives of others. May you have compassion to win souls in the name of Jesus. Amen. May you have compassion to know that Jesus is coming very soon. Amen. Father, oh God, remove every negativity and every laziness in our body. Yes, Help us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you, oh God, for those who are here for the first time. And may they remain in the name of Jesus. Amen. We bind the powers of hell that will bring every distraction in our lives. Jesus, 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 you are Lord over our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise, Praise God. God. Thank you very much, Pastor Mike. Praise God. I'm just looking around. Praise God. I should mention Sister Marie, my cousin. Praise God. I thought she was going to be in California. 
this week, but somehow she's here. Bless be the name of God. It is just so good for every one of us, praise God, coming together like um, iron sharpens iron, supporting each other, lifting each other up. It's a blessing, isn't it? Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. Second Samuel, chapter 9. Here's what happened prior to what we're going to read. Saul died. Saul was the first king of Israel. We know that. He was the first king of Israel. He died. Tragic circumstances. The Israel was attacked. The army was defeated. Saul died. His son, Jonathan, also died in battle. David was a new king. Now, David was a honorable young man. He recognized that Saul should be honored for whatever years he served. David was serving for a while and he looked around and realized that there was no relative of Saul that was within the kingdom. And that concerned him. Saul was a king. He deserved to be hunted. Don't you think? And so David said, Saul really should be hunted. Why is there no relative of Saul around? And so as we read in verse 1 of chapter 9, David asked, Is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Jonathan was David's BFF. It was his best friend. They hung out together. He was the son of the king and David and Jonathan had a very good relationship. And so David is saying, for Jonathan's sake, is there anybody that is related to them that I can give, I can show kindness? Now there was a servant of Saul's also named Ziba. They summoned him to appear before David and the king said to him, Are you Ziba? At your service, Ziba replied. The king asked, Is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is lame in both feet. Do you realize that sometimes when people get to know you, the first thing they know about you are the negative things. Yes. Yeah, Sister Choma. Minister Choma. Instead of saying, yeah, that beautiful sister from Prayer Center. Ah, the one that... Always something negative that we hear about someone. Now, he's being introduced and the thing that is being used to identify him is that he's laying in two feet. Where is he? The king asked, verse 4. Ziba answered, he's at the house of Machir, son of Amel, in Lodibar. Why is he not in the kingdom? Why is he not within the company of royalty? Verse 5, so King David had him brought from Lodibar, from the house of Mecca, son of Amuel. When Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. Let me just tell you the story instead of reading it. What had happened earlier, when Saul died, when it was reported that Saul died, Jonathan died, and the army of Israel was destroyed. Little Mephibosheth, I know I told the story before, because I'm Jamaican and I'm gonna call that long name Mephibosheth. I'm gonna call him Mephi. We're Jamaicans, amen. So, Mephi was a child in the house of Jonathan when the news came that the army was defeated, Jonathan and, they, and, and Saul were killed. And so the nurse 
grabbed the little boy and started to run because it was just a matter of time before they would, the, the enemy would come into the city and destroy everyone in the city. So she grabbed the little boy and started to run. Unfortunately, while she was running to escape, the child fell from her hand and injured both legs. But somehow, they still made it to Lodibar. Far away from Israel, far away from the kingdom, far away from the privilege of being amongst royalty, far away from his inheritance. Not just that he was far away, but he was injured. Leave me here, Holy Spirit. There are times when life takes us to some places where we are both injured and far away from our destiny, far away from the privileges that we knew we could have enjoyed. Some life, sometimes life takes us to a place where we didn't dream we would be, and we didn't deserve to be. But sometimes life and the circumstances are cruel. Now here are some facts that were mitigating against Mephibosheth. One, his past hurt could hinder him from being the person he, want, he was meant to be. Because of his hurt, that could stop him from being the person that he was meant to be. There are times when we were born for a purpose. But things happen in our lives that just completely change the course of our lives. And we don't fulfill the purpose for which we were born. We don't even walk in the identity that we should be walking in because of things that happen to us. So Mephibosheth could have been denied his identity. Now he was not even known as Saul's son. He was known as Saul's son who was laying in both legs. His identity was changed because of his infirmity. The second thing that could happen or might be happening to Mephuseth is that he could see himself less than who he really is because of his infirmity. He was royalty. Because, but because he was lame in his legs, he now sees himself as being less than who he really was. He was the grandson of a king. That's an esteemed position to be in. But because he was so far in Lodibar, and his two legs were lame, he saw himself as being less than who he really was. Sometimes that happened to us, don't it? The third thing. He seemed to be stuck right where he was and was never to move forward. He was so far away. He was so unfortunate. There are times when we seem as if we are stuck in a particular situation, stuck in a particular set of circumstances. And we believe that because of those circumstances, because of that situation, we will never move forward in pursuing our destiny. So it could have been. And so it might have been with Methi. And the fourth thing, there was too much distance between where he was and where he would have wanted to be. Let's examine ourselves today and be honest. How many of us have made an assessment of where we are and have determined that we are nowhere close to where we want to be? How many of us? Me. Four, ten, twelve, fifteen, twenty. Amen. Amen. And so I believe that I'm talking within the right context. I'm talking to the right people. I'm talking to me also. These circumstances that affected Mephibosheth are affecting some of us here today. Maybe not all the circumstances, but one or two. And some of us, every single set of circumstances, every single circumstance that was affecting Mephibosheth, those circumstances are today affecting us. I believe there's something that God wants to say to us today. To let us know, blessed be the name of God, that these circumstances are nothing for God to remove. For nothing, nothing that God can change. He can change everything because there's nothing impossible for God to do. Amen. Help the Holy Spirit. So there are one, two, three Four things that I'd like for us to declare today. One, 
My injury will not determine my destiny. Amen. Will you say it with me, please? My injury will not determine my destiny. Praise God. Praise God. Life sometimes takes us away from takes away from us our safety net. It takes away from us the people and the circumstances in our lives that should be the primary architects of our destiny. Saul and Jonathan would have paved the way for the future of Methy. He had a good thing going on. Having the king as his grandfather and the king's son as his father. But life took away from him the architects of his destiny. These are the people in his life that would help him, guarantee him to fulfill the purpose for which he was born, but life took them away. What was he to do? When the primary source of our success, when the primary set of architects are taken out of our lives, sometimes we fall upon secondary sources of protection, secondary sources of comfort. And then in our efforts to escape from further danger, we unexpectedly experience that. We experience a social injury, a financial injury, a relationship injury, one injury or the other that could cripple us for life. And I believe the worst hurt that we can experience is the hurt that we suffer from someone who should be protecting us. When the shoulder that you're leaning on becomes a stone wall that broods. When the foundation that you're standing on becomes sinking sand. When the nurse that should protect you drop you and cripple you. It hurts more than anything else. And so was the hurt of Methy. But I submit today, it doesn't matter who hurt you. It doesn't matter where you're hurt. It doesn't matter how you're hurt. That's be the name of the living God. That wound is going to be healed. Hallelujah. It might leave a scar. Maybe it will cause you to walk with a limp, but walk anyway. Bless me the name of God. I've always said that when I look at the scars on my body, I don't remember the wound. I remember, hallelujah, that it has been healed. Because if it was not healed, there wouldn't be a scar. Hallelujah. I said, I don't remember the blood. I don't remember the hurt. I don't remember the wound itself. But I look on that wound. I look on that scar. I said, bless be the name of God. Even though I was hurt, I have been healed. And the fact that I've been healed, I'm not going to allow, praise God, I'm not going to allow my injury to determine my destiny. I know I'm talking to somebody here today. Bless be the name of God. Thank you, Jesus. Paul went through so many different types of injuries. He was flogged. He was whipped. He was bruised. He was beaten and thrown out of the city, says the pack. Thrown out of the city because they thought he was dead. They threw him on the dirt. Hallelujah. Possibly flies were uh, pitching up on his body. All different types of things were happening. He was outside the city bleeding. But Paul got up. He brushed himself off. Hallelujah. And he continued his journey. Let me tell you something. There is no injury in your life that can bring you down to the extent that God cannot lift you up. There is no brokenness that God cannot mend. There is nothing in your life that God cannot address. Even though Paul was out there lying in the dirt as though he was dead, he got up and he continued to live. And at the end of his life, Paul declared, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Hallelujah! And God is saying to somebody here today, the fight is still on, but you keep on fighting until the battle is won. It's not over until God says it's over. And God will never tell you it's over. Keep on fighting. Keep on struggling. Because your injury will not determine your destiny. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. The second thing I'd like for us to, 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 to declare, 
So the first thing was my injury will not determine my destiny. The second thing is my infirmity does not change my identity. Let's say that. My infirmity does not change my identity. I am who I am. Praise God. I'm walking like this this Sunday. Yeah, baby. And next Sunday, I'm walking like this. It's still me. Don't, don't judge me because I'm, I'm walking and shrugging a foot behind me. Don't judge me because I'm not standing tall. Don't judge me because I'm not dressed up like I used to dress up. Don't judge me because I don't talk like I used to talk. Don't judge me because I'm bleeding. Don't judge me because I'm bruised. Don't judge me because I'm falling. I'm the same me because the same me that was standing yesterday, even though I'm falling today, will be rising again tomorrow. Hallelujah. Because my today is not a continuation of my yesterday. It's the beginning of my tomorrow. And therefore, I will always contend that the rest of my life will be the best of my life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So my infirmity does not change my identity. Hallelujah. I'm who I am. I'm who God says that I am. You are who you are. You are who God says that you are. So let no thank you, thank you, pia, pia, dibi, dibi type of circumstances come before you. Hallelujah. And try to change who you are. You are who you are regardless of your circumstances because your infirmity does not change your identity. Help me, Holy Spirit. We all have some type of weakness. Any one of us. There's not one single righteous person up in here. No perfect person. We all have our weaknesses. We have our imperfection that can cause us to feel hopelessly less than who we really are. I am sure that Matthew was feeling less than the king's grandson. Dragging behind us. We very often walk through life dragging behind us the weight of past mistakes. We see ourselves differently because we have had a bad reputation. There are some of us who make some mistakes. And when you make one step mistake, people add ten more steps to it. Amen. You are hungry and you stole one banana. Just one day can make a banana. So what you want to talk about? <laughs> one day can make a banana. Because you're hungry. And the story goes out. Oh my God. Bishop Simmons, eat the entire bunch of Brother Brown banana. Not just one bunch, but three bunch. People add to things. They build up on it. And your reputation gets bad. And gets beaten up, praise God. And if you're not careful, you believe the lies that people are telling about you. And you live according to your reputation. But God is saying, listen, your weakness and your imperfection, your past mistakes, those things do not determine your future or your destiny. Because God has a plan for every single one of us. And there's none of us that have not made a mistake. There's not any of us, hallelujah, who do not have weakness or imperfections. But we serve a living God Almighty. Hallelujah. Who was wounded for transgressions. Bruised. And so we stand here leaning on the mercies of God. Saying, God, give me a chance, Lord. Another chance. Because somehow I believe that my infirmity does not change my identity. I'm still your son, God. I'm still your daughter. Hallelujah. I believe that the royal blood still flows in my veins. And I have a hope in you, Christ, that when you shall appear, I shall be with you. Thank you, God. If Jonathan was alive, he would have loved his son, despite his injuries. It would still love his son, despite his infirmities. The sick child, the injured child, the developmentally challenged child, you gotta receive the most attention. Am I? Yeah. You have five, four children, one is a little slow, and that one gets more attention than anybody else. And so God does the very same thing when God sees that you're falling behind. When God sees that you're weak. 
When God sees that you're struggling, when God sees that you can barely make it, he reaches out his loving hands. There was 99 safely in the flock. And there was one, hallelujah, one little lamb that strayed. And the Lord said, the shepherd, the good shepherd, left the 99 that was safely in the fold, and he went searching for the one. Are you that one today? Are you that one today? So often I'm that one that God has to search for. Bishop Simmons, where are you? You're breathing on the fence again? You jump over the wall again? Where are you? Why are you not in the flock? Why are you not with the rest? But he leaves in 99 and he searches. Blessed be the name of the living God. Joseph. Joseph. You are hated by your brothers, Joseph. Joseph, when you were wearing that beautiful coat of many colors, you were glorified before God. But Joseph, I'd like to let you know that when you were in the bottom of that pit, God still saw you as an anointed one. Joseph, you were favored of God. Hallelujah. And when you were in the prison, you were still favored of God. Joseph, it doesn't matter what situation you find yourself in, you were born for a purpose and God has a destiny and you shall, hallelujah, achieve your purpose regardless of where you are today, regardless of how you are today. Blessed be the name of the living God. Your infirmity does not change your identity. You are who you are. Moses, you have just murdered that man and buried him under the sun, but you were born for a purpose and regardless of your murder, God's going to lift you up. Hallelujah, because you are the purpose. There are too many of us having made a mistake and give up on our lives. There are too many of us who have made a mistake, hallelujah, and change how we see ourselves. We see a different person in the mirror because of what we did yesterday and what we did last week. But God Almighty, hallelujah, took Moses to the back side of the mountain. He spent 40 years, but after 40 years, the Lord God Almighty himself, hallelujah, appeared before Moses and said, Moses, take off your shoes standing his holy ground I have a mission for you I have a purpose for you hallelujah and every single one of us here today needs to recognize that there is a mission yes. oh yes there's a purpose there is. Hallelujah. you are on the back side of a mountain you're no longer living in Pharaoh's palace you're no longer favored hallelujah no longer appreciated you are you are run away you are a runaway a fugitive but God's gonna find you yes. just where you are Hallelujah. just where you are thank you Lord hallelujah let me go on with this thing the third thing I'd like for us to declare my current location is not my final destination. See me now? See me now? Praise God. Don't look for me tomorrow. I'm the same place. I'm moving on, baby. Oh, yeah. I'm moving on. Praise God. There's a song that says, I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain. I'm doing my best to make it home. Hallelujah. It might not appear to you that I'm all that I'm supposed to be because I'm so far away from where I'm supposed to be. You're looking for me, you can't find me. Hallelujah. But the path to my destiny is already in place. Hallelujah. And the step that I should take to achieve my success, they are still in place. They are already in place. And so even though you can't find me where I'm supposed to be, but God Almighty has established a path and it's just a matter of time before I find that path. I'm going to walk in that path. I'm going to step one step at a time. And not too long from now, you're going to see me on top of the mountain. I'm speaking for every one of us because you might not be where you ought to be. You might be too far away. But I'd like for us to tell ourselves over and over again that our current location is not our final destination. Blessed be the name of God. 
Bless me the name of God. Am I speaking to somebody here today? Bless me the name of God. I want to encourage somebody. Don't give up on life. Don't give up on your circumstances. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your hope. Don't give up on your love. Don't give up on your passion. Don't give up, hallelujah, on the things that mean the most to you. Because somehow God's going to come forth. Somehow God, hallelujah, will step in your circumstances. And you will make it home. And you'll be who you want to be. Thank you, Jesus. Your journey through life has taken you to places that cause you to scratch your head. Your life takes you to them places you scratch your head, Brad. You scratch your head. I said, how on the heaven did I reach here? How did I reach here? What brought me here? How could I be in this place? But where you are now is not where you always will be. And some trust in God. Hallelujah. Rahab was on the walls of Jericho, a harlot, a prostitute. That's who she was. Yes. On the walls of Jericho. But she was placed there for a reason. She thought, she thought that her purpose was just to be there selling herself. That's what she thought. But she was positioned in an unfavorable, ugly looking spot, doing an ugly thing. But when the spies came, when the men of God came to, Jerus to, to, to Jericho mm. to spy out the land, she was in the right place to hide them. Mm. Mm. Sometimes you believe that where you are in life is an unfortunate position. Sometimes you believe that you are trapped in your activities, your behavior. Sometimes you believe, praise God, that nobody loves you, nobody likes you, and you are the least of all of them. But that bad spot that you're at your end, maybe doing the wrong things, might just be where you ought to be for the time being. And so after she hid the spies, everybody in Jericho were was killed. Everybody in Jericho was destroyed except for who? His family. Except for Harlot. Except for Rahab. For having done, hallelujah, a favor of God. All that God might be doing is setting you up for one favor that he asks of you. If you will open up your heart, open up your mind, hallelujah, for that opportunity, for that one favor that God wants you to do, then your entire destiny, your entire life, your entire future can be changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ask the Holy Spirit right now to help me out here because my voice can't do it. My voice can't make the change that needs to be changed in you. Hallelujah. I have nothing, no charisma, no charm, no eloquence, no nothing that can change your life. But the power of the living God that is present in this place can change some circumstances. Somebody's life is about to be changed. Somebody's circumstances are about to be changed. Somebody's situation is about to be changed. Somebody, hallelujah, will take a different look on who you are. Somebody will believe that it doesn't matter where you are, how you are, hallelujah, you think you are God, you're going to change your life and change it for the good. Hallelujah. Let's believe somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Let's believe. Praise Let's believe. God. Praise God. Rahab was not the saved and her family, but Rahab eventually married a captain of the host of Israel. She got married to a captain Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you were to do your genealogies, you will find that Rahab, the prostitute, excuse me, Rahab was a great, 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 it's a great, 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 grandson of that little old woman there. A prostitute. You don't understand the extent of the love of God. We don't understand we church people who judge people. You don't understand what God Almighty will do to the worst, 
of the worst. You don't understand when somebody falls flat on their face and lying in the mud, the purpose that God has for that muddy person. You don't understand, hallelujah. And so let's not look down our noses on people who are not like us. Not so sanctified, not so holy, not, 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 not so preserved. There's a purpose. There's a purpose. There's a purpose. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. I'm almost done. Now the last thing I'd like for us to be clear. Distance will not keep me from my inheritance. Distance will not keep me from my inheritance. The inheritance that Messi should be blessed with was far away from where he was. Or he was far away from his inheritance. Far away. Lodibar was over 3,400 miles from Israel. From here to Jamaica is 1,600 miles. What about 1,600 miles from here to Jamaica? Lodibar, Israel, over 3,400 miles. Six hours by plane. 50 hours by car. You think about where you are and realize it's nowhere close to where you want to be. And the devil says to you that it's too far. I'm closing. The devil is telling somebody here today it's too far. Is that where you want to go? It's too far. You're too far away. I'm sorry, it's too far away. Between you and your loved ones, uh, the distance has widened. It's too far away. Between you and your dreams, nah, it's not going to happen. It's too far away. Between you and your forgiveness, no, it can't happen. You're too far away, it's in. But your distance will not keep you from your inheritance. Amen. Even when the devil says it's too far. When the prodigal went away from home, left his daddy's house, used everything he had, came back. He said, I'm going to go back to my father and I know that I am not worthy to be his son. He changed his identity, you see. I'm going to ask him to be a servant. But his father saw him from afar off and said, my son who was dead is no life. My son who was lost is now found. Do you believe in the love of God for your life? The father went and killed the fatted calf, put a robe on his son, put a ringer, put a ring on his finger, hugged him, loved him, and received him back home, not as a servant, but as a son. As I close here today, I'd like for us to believe in ourselves. Believe that your injury will not determine your destiny. Believe that your infirmity does not change your identity. Believe that your current location is not your final destination. And I'd like for you to believe that your distance will not keep you from your inheritance. Will you believe?